you landed. I think a lot of people were beginning to think you were a robot. You know, go out there and uh, throw it by people, and uh, you got knocked around a little bit out there in Hoover. I mean, you know, you've played baseball a long time, so you know days like that are going to happen. But you know, social media lights up, and everybody's like, "Oh, you know, look what happened to Landon Sims." So, how do you respond to that? What are your What are your thoughts about all that? Um, you know, right when I walked um, past, you know, the the third base foul line right there, um, it kind of just left my brain. Um, you know, baseball is a really, really, really tough sport. You know, it's the most humbling sport in the world. Um, so I know things are like that are going to happen. Um, you know, if I do happen to have a long career, you know, that's probably going to happen a hundred other times. So um, being able to deal with tough outings is um, a really big part of being a successful baseball player. Kind of following up on that too. You've had those days before at some point, whether it be little league or high school or whatever, how easy is it to flush that? Or does it just make you that much more intense? So, you know, I got to go out next time and really shut these guys down. I mean, I know there's a, that fire in you to do that, but how do you handle that? Um, you know, I wouldn't really say it's easy to flush it. Um, but you know, it's, a it, it's a really bad thing to, um, sit there and, uh, let it marinate. Um, so, you know, I usually watch, uh, most of my outings, uh, back on the TV. Um, and then, you know, that, that last outing against Tennessee, I didn't even, I didn't even think about watching that one. Um, you know, and it was in the SEC tournament. So I think it was a really good time. Um, for that to happen um, you know it was bound to happen at some point uh, but yeah it, it's it's going to make me better down um, the stretch here in the postseason um, and I'm ready to go we'll swing it over to Joel Coleman next and we'll go to Robbie Joel go ahead Landon we, we get to see that switch kind of flip for you uh, when, when, when you go to the mound and, and in the late innings and things and we were talking with Luke a minute ago about, about it but for you, when does that switch flip? When do, when do you go from a little bit laid back to uh, that football mentality and that, that, that you know, intensity that, that we see in the late innings? When's that moment come for you when that switch flips? Um, usually I head down to the bullpen about the fifth or sixth inning um, during each game, uh, and it starts to, to flip a little bit right there. And then, um, you know, when they call down to the bullpen and tell me to start getting ready, um, that's when it really, really switches. Um, and I got to go into that mentality of, um, you know, it's me versus these guys, and I got to do what I got to do to um, hold the game where it's at and um, put us in the best spot to win. And I guess how do you channel that? Because I would think there's a point where you want to have that football mentality, you, you want to be intense, but out there with the season on the line in front of 15,000 folks this, this weekend, I would imagine there's – you don't want to get too hyped. I imagine that could be a, a problem too. How, how do you kind of channel that to keep from, I guess, going over the edge a little bit? Um, I don't know how many of y'all remember, but my first outing last year um, in front of how many of our fans were there, uh, I threw 11 pitches and I threw nine strikes – or nine, nine balls. I threw two strikes and 11 pitches, um, and Coach Lomotis came out there and pulled me. Um, so in that situation, uh, I was, I was overhyped a little bit. Um, you know, being a freshman going out there in front of – 10,000 people for the first time was a little bit overwhelming um, as much as I don't want to admit it. Um, but after that, you know, I feel like I've done a really good job of, um, you know, breathing and uh, just trusting, trusting my catcher, trusting uh, Coach Foxhall's pitch calling and uh, trusting my defense behind me and, um, you know, let what happens happen. Robbie, go ahead. Landon, kind of talking about flipping the switch. I mean, you guys had a couple of days off after the SEC tournament, and you've had to flip that switch back into to preparation mode and getting ready for this regional. What have the last few days been like for you guys, and how focused do you feel like the team is heading into a Friday's game? Um, I feel like we're really focused. Uh, you know, we had two days to flush the SEC tournament. You know, we, we were over and done with that um, as soon as we got on the bus to head back to Starkville. Um, but those two days off, um, you know, just to, just to lay back a little bit, you know, we lifted still, but um, we stayed um, off the field. And uh, I, th I think we're in a really good spot right now. Um, you know, we got we to gotta come ready to play. These are, these are three really, really good teams, um, and we can't, we can't take anything for granted here. And we got to play really good baseball. And you've kind of been through the ringer now in the SEC. I mean, you're not a freshman. You're not a freshman anyway. It's your second year, but first year in the SEC. This is going to be your first regional, and I know the big atmosphere hasn't bothered you at all, but how excited are you to get out there and pitch in a, a situation like this in front of this kind of atmosphere? 
Um, you know, since the day I committed here, uh, back in my sophomore year of high school, I've just been watching these, uh, watching these big moments uh, unfold here in Starkville. Um, you know, in 19, the regional and the super regional um, got me real fired up uh, for, for these situations. And, um, you know, being in those big situations here in a few days, um, you know, that's, that's what you, that's what you come here for. Um, you know, you don't, you don't want to go anywhere else in the country and uh, play in front of anybody else with anybody else. We'll go back to Steve. Steve, go ahead. Kind of piggybacking off that, Landon, it's, you mentioned your, your first uh, appearance and, and it was kind of forgettable, I guess, for most people, but for you, you'll probably never forget that. But when you go out there for the first time in front of all these people, and there's all these expectations, how much more important is to have those 13,000 people cheering for you instead of cheering against you? I mean, Mississippi State arguably has one of the best home field advantages in the country. Yeah, you know, that's huge um, for us. And we've talked about that. Um, you know, how hostile of an environment that it's going to be, uh, you know, playing in front of 12, 13, 14,000 people um, here in Starkville. Um, and to, I mean, it's not easy to do being the home team, um, but uh, it, it's going to be even harder to do uh, being the away team, um, especially for, for all of our fans cheering us on. We've got time for a couple more for Landon. Again, utilize that raise your hand function. We'll go to Ellie. Ellie, go ahead. And just with the talk about your guys' performance in the SEC tournament, I mean, just how motivating is it for you guys as a team, just based on what people have said about your guys' performance in Hoover? How much are you guys just trying to, to kind of prove everyone wrong, you know, heading into regional play? Um, you know, we try not to pay attention to what, uh, you know, people say about us, whether it's good or bad. Um, you know, we like to stay pretty even kill right there. Um, but you know, we know we didn't play up to uh, our standard. Um, so that gives, gives us a little bit more motivation. But, um, you know, now that that's over, um, we're looking forward to 2 o'clock tomorrow against Stanford. We'll wrap it up with Landon with Steve. Steve, go ahead. Landon, it, could it be a situation, too, where you guys can kind of flip the script a little bit? Maybe people are starting to doubt Mississippi State a little bit. You know, whereas before, maybe a month ago, people were thinking, man, these guys are impossible to beat. Now, all of a sudden, do you think, you know, maybe you can use this as a motivating factor heading into the postseason where perhaps, you know, the loss was could be a good thing, I guess? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, sometimes a few bad losses um, can turn around a season uh, for a team. But, you know, it's it's do or die right here. Um, you know, we got to we got to play to our best every game, every inning, every pitch. Um, so it, it, it's a little motivating, but. Um, you know, we, we know what we can do. And if we play to our best ability, we, we know that um, we're a really tough team to beat. We'll keep landing for one more. Jay Walker, go ahead. Thank you. Landon, let me get underneath your, underneath your brim for a little bit. Uh, what position did you play in football? Uh, I played safety in high school. You miss it? Uh, yeah, I do a lot. Um, I talk about it all the time, about how much I miss it. Um, you know, it's, it's a really fun sport. Uh, you know, I said going into going into college, there wasn't much that would uh, beat Friday Night Lights. But um, I think playing in front of uh, 12, 13,000 people at the Dude um, is is pretty unbeatable. Does that football background help you with like the closer mentality? You know, you're going on the road and the booze and all eyes on you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, being a closer, you got to have a, a, a little bit of a of a mean mentality out there. Um, you know, nobody's going to feel bad for you. Um, and it's you, it's you against everybody else. So, you know, I like that. Um, I like to bring a little bit of attitude onto the mound. And last one, what's the better feeling striking out the side or getting the pick six? <laughs> um, I think I only had one pick six in uh, my football career, but, um, striking out the side is a pretty good feeling. <laughs> All right, man. Best of luck. Thank you.